Hey, it's Sydney with MCAT Mastery, and today I want to talk to you about why the MCAT is more than just a test of knowledge. I want to start off with some advice I feel like I've learned over my past two years of being in medical school, and that is being a doctor requires a lot, a lot more than just memorizing facts and applying information to a test. For example, you have to have confidence in your decision-making skills, you have to gain confidence in your medical judgment, and ultimately, it takes an incredible amount of critical thinking and critical reasoning skills. This is what the MCAT is ultimately testing. You can memorize every physics equation there is and you can know the structure of every single amino acid forwards and backwards but if you can't take the knowledge you have and apply it to new situations that you may be unfamiliar with then the MCAT becomes really difficult. It's the same thing in medical school. You're going to learn a lot of information, you're going to learn a lot of things that you have to simply memorize, but the real skill in medicine comes with, okay, how do I take that knowledge that I know I'm confident in and apply it to these new and novel situations? So one of the big realizations I had when studying for the MCAT was that the MCAT writers are kind of trying to trick you. They write these questions that have distracting answer choices, distracting or very long, complicated graphs or charts, all these things that your brain is telling you, I need to interpret that right now, I need to fully understand and digest every part of this that I'm reading, when in reality, that's not a sustainable test-taking strategy. They're gonna run out of time, they're gonna get flustered and stressed out trying to understand these complicated things, and then you spend all of your time and energy on something that you may not even need to answer the question at all. So let me give you kind of a tangible example of how I took this knowledge and applied it to my MCAT test-taking strategy. So a personal struggle of mine when studying for the MCAT was the chemistry and physics section. I struggled a lot through chemistry and physics in college. The information did not come naturally to me. I felt like I struggled to really grasp the concepts and um, was really worried about how that would translate into that um, section on the MCAT. But time and time again, I applied these strategies that I'm going to talk about and saw my score kind of increase over time. I was able to tackle that section with confidence and ultimately see great results. Ultimately, I ended up scoring my second highest overall passage score on the ChemPhys section. So one of the big strategies that I learned for this ChemPhys section was the graphs and the charts don't always sit and read and interpret every single piece of information a passage throws at you. Now that seems scary to say, right? Because if they've taken the time to add this graph, add all this information, you want to interpret it all and understand best so you can apply that information to the questions. However, as I was going through and reviewing ChemPhys questions that I had missed, I realized that half of the time I wasn't even really using that information from a graph or a chart that I spent way too long analyzing to even answer those passage questions. I'll add a disclaimer here. I don't recommend skipping or ignoring graphs and charts on the MCAT. I think there's a just strategic way that you can approach these graphs and charts so that you still get enough information to know if you need it without spending excess time or wasting your time on trying to decipher information that's not even going to help you answer a question. So what did I do with these graphs? graphs and charts and the excess information in them. So whenever I approached a graph or a chart in a question, I would always, you know, read the title, read the x-axis, the y-axis, any kind of caption that's included to just get a baseline idea of what is this graph talking about and what exactly are they trying to convey with this information. What I didn't do was sit there and try to interpret relationships, correlations, anything like that because I was spending way too much time doing that before. So then when I would get into my questions and read the question stems, oftentimes the questions that require the information that's included in those, those figures, it'll say, it'll point you back to in figure two or in table one. And in that case, I knew I needed to go back and spend a little extra time fully interpreting what they have to say in that figure. So this leads me to kind of point number two, and that is let the question guide you to the answer in the passage. That may look like for some people, reading the questions first before diving into the passage, or reading the passage kind of first pass and then hi highlighting things in your question stems that may point you back to places that you highlighted in your passage. Now this is a technique that will come with time and practice. The more practice questions you do, the more confident you'll feel in knowing which words are pointing to which place in the passage and it will become kind of second nature and become a lot more of a natural way for you to approach a question. One caveat I do want to include is that obviously this doesn't work for those shorter questions that don't include the whole passage and with 
those, those are really a test of knowledge. So use those short questions to say, here you go, MCAT writers, I have the knowledge, I know what I'm doing, I have that equation memorized. And in the passage questions, that is your chance to shine and show your critical thinking skills and your ability to get rid of the distracting information and use everything you have within your own knowledge bank and in the knowledge bank that MCAT writers have written and given to you to answer that question to the best of your ability. So. If you're watching this video right now, I have the confidence in you that you're taking all of the right steps to work towards increasing your MCAT score and better understanding the strategies needed to absolutely ace the MCAT. If you're a little bit lost on where to begin with that strategy, I would encourage you to maybe look into using MCAT Mastery. There is a free MCAT strategy email which you can sign up for using the link below. You know the information, you've put in the work, and now you know you're supposed to be looking out for the tricks that MCAT writers have hid all throughout the test. So it's your turn to uncover those tricks, beat the writers at their own game, and show the MCAT writers just how smart you truly are.